Good day everyone. Thank you for taking the time out to watch my video. And what I will be doing here will be processing small format 135 film, also known as 35 millimeter film, which fits inside of this 35 millimeter film camera. I still use this camera. About 10% of my work is photographed on small format photography. 90% of my work is photographed on medium format photography. I will be processing some color film, color negative film that is, and they call it C41 color processing. Now, there are six steps in this chemical process. With small format film, it's not any different than processing medium format film except you have more frames. With small formats you have 24 frames in some rows and in other rows you have 36 frames. I will be processing a roll of Agatha 200 speed film. This is the aftermath of me taking the film out of this canister and rolling it, it onto here. Please do not do this on Facebook Live or YouTube Live in broad daylight or any kind of light. This is a test strip of film that I'm, I am sharing with you so you can see how the film look when you load it properly. Now, again, this is a test roll. This is how you load it. The way that I load it, there's different ways that you can do this. You basically, in the dark, you will hold this. Some people will trim the edges and you slide it in like this gently and then you wind it now when you do this in the dark it takes time to learn I have been dealing with film for 20 years therefore I have my own method and instincts with dealing with this kind of film and film in general today I will try to show you the most proper way of processing film because it's so many different styles that you can attribute towards processing film because as you grow into the technique you will sh stray away from what the instructions tell you but I will try to stay within the instructions and hopefully you will enjoy photography film photography that is and you will try it yourself the most difficult part could be when you load this up onto the reel now once you load this up it goes inside of this tank right here and this tank has water inside of it because I'm I will start the processing soon it has one water inside of it. they call it a pre bath what it does it rinses the film prepare it so that it can go through this chemical process there's a roll inside of here with a roll of this film Agafer 200 Vista Plus and as you can see there's slots here the chemicals go through here there is a plastic tube that goes inside of here which has a sort of lining inside of it that holds this reel and also an agitation rod goes inside of it. Some people instead of going back and forth, which you will see me do in a few, they will use the agitation rod to turn it this way. This shakes the chemical or chemicals around the roll of film, basically taking it through the process. And also, what this does is that it gives the film a chance to actually go through each stage. Now, that we're past that, let's start this processing. Water is very important to the process. You have to preheat your water. They recommend 102 degrees. So I'm going to stay proper and pay attention to their instructions. Again, it's mathematics. If you go a little bit higher, you have to compensate that with how you time the chemicals being stored inside of this tank. And let's start this. I'm gonna pour the water. I'm gonna let the water sit for one minute. I will hit my timer, which is over here. And I will talk to you until the one minute is up, which is 60 seconds. This is a plastic tank. 
some people they will say that you can take this tank and you know tap it against a, the edge of a table I advise against that with metal tanks which were the tanks before this and they are still available you could do that because they are a bit more stronger in terms of them banging up against something or you tapping it gently against a edge of a table with plastic tanks I don't know I wouldn't try that it's chemicals in here and just a regular agitation like this and you tap the back of it you will see I'm about to get this started and I hope that you enjoy it now the developer what a develop development part of this will be this you pour this inside of it this timer is about to go off so I will explain it as I start this process excuse me for a second I'm setting my new time so when I pour the developer inside of here after I pour this water out now sometimes the coloration or the color some color will come out of there will, will roll right, right off of the film don't worry about that um, what you need to do now is get this developer you take the top off it's at 102 degrees Fahrenheit some people will tip it this way or that way on an angle to help the developer go inside of it so that it can prevent air from going inside and creating air bubbles you fill this up into the funnel until it grows inside of it and you can see it inside of there you set it inside make sure your lid is on top and that is secure now the developer what it does is that it transform the, the metallic silver which is inside of it into it goes through a chemical process and with color film just as black and white film there are layers inside of color film there are one there's one layer inside of black and white film there are three layers inside of color film the developer helped the chemical process start the three latent images to go through what they call the coupler color color couplers and with this you go into the emotion and with the the three emotions you have what is that magenta cyan and yellow okay we're going to start this process I will start the timer for the first 10 seconds you will agitate it tap the, the bottom of it like this to help the chemicals and then you wait 30 seconds before you start your agitation again every 30 seconds the instructions will tell you to do it four times so you have to time yourself within four agitations within 30 seconds now this is a bit debatable because if you do eight agitations every 60 seconds you're basically doing the same thing I'm about to start my next four agitations right now tap the bottom so that it can disrupt the air bubbles and you hold it or you place it down now once again this is very important because the developer starts the whole process of this you're dealing with silver metallic and you're dealing with the emulsion inside of this now there's three layers to this film about to start my agitation that's one, two, three, four. Now these three layers, like I said, they comprise of magenta, cyan, and yellow. This is very, very important for the development of film because it's color. Now these are dyes. I'm about to start my agitation.
Now what separates this from painting, and why some people debate that painting is real color, and photography is artificial color, would be because of the dye. Depending on who you ask, painting is at least 40,000 years old, so they might win that argument. But with black and white, that's where photography stands and grows from. This is my last agitation. And then you want to pour this out before it gets to the seconds that ends. So I want to beat my clock. By the time my clock goes off, I want to be empty. See that? Let me get over here and get to this clock. I'm setting my new timer because I'm about to work on the blicks. Now after you do this, if you pour the chemicals back in, and what we're going to do is rinse this off. You don't want cross-contamination with your chemicals. Now with the Blix, this is very important because the Blix is a combination of a bleach and a fixer. At one point in time, there used to be two separate steps in color processing, C41 that is. Okay, you pour the Blix inside, same thing, you wash the funnel, now this really has a pungent smell, I'm used to it, if you're not used to it you probably should do it somewhere with proper ventilation, perhaps opening a window, and having some air come inside. The room or wearing a facial mask, surgical mask. You make sure this is tight all the way around. You don't want to spill this at all. Now, this is the longest part of the process. What the Blix does, again, is bleach and a fixer. What it does will be that the bleach removes the silver that is on it's real. It also re the chemicals inside of it, which basically put the film, this roll of film, back into an unexposed condition. I know, it's, it's, negative film is, is interesting. And what the fixer does, because they are a they're, they're collection of chemicals, what the fixer does would be to basically it cleanses or it, fi it fixes what it states it will f it will fix the chemicals to remove all of the silver halides that is and also removing the re halogenized element of the chemicals that are already on the film it leaves the dye remember the color couplers that I mentioned earlier magenta cyan and yellow it leaves that on the film and that's what the bleach well it's bleach fixer and they shorten it to, into one word and it's blix it's a pretty cool word i'm about to start the timer and then This can be, we will see how this process goes. Again, this is what you could consider two processes in one. First 10 seconds, you're gonna do your agitation. Like this. You don't have to tap the bottom of this because there are no air bubbles. And after the first 10 seconds, you will wait. This will be set for six minutes and 20 seconds, but I'm going to do five minutes and 20 seconds. I know I said it would be proper, but I'm going to try something different. Also, with this, you need to remember that this is a very important stage. This is the middle stage of processing. And I'm about to start my agitation again. That will be four, 
But like I said, some people may do more than four. Some people may do less than four. But you have to do agitation. There's no way around it. You cannot just dump chemicals inside of it and let it sit overnight. It doesn't marinate or anything like that. You have to distribute the chemicals. And you have to do it pretty routinely when you're doing it. So find your rhythm. Like I said, if you take what they're telling you by the numbers and do it yourself, you can figure out a mathematical equation that fits the kind of processing that you wish to do. Now, again, it depends on what you're looking for when you're doing this film. Some people push and pull film, that's a different topic, which basically means under exposing, over developing, or over exposing, and under developing. And um, like I said, don't just learn the technique of it first and foremost. Do not allow people to strictly tell you how you should do it because you'll be learning it their way. You should just learn technique first and then figure it out and see what fits your method of doing things. And from there you can basically find your own path with film development. It takes time. I know with digital, I don't have any digital cameras so I don't work on digital, but I would imagine that digital film gives you the instant gratification on super speed. So. I just want to let you know that with this film process, you will be putting in some patience. Also, temperature-wise, this will also be at 102 degrees. I measured my temperature before, so I don't want people to think I just started pulling chemicals in here without measuring them. And you have to wait, like I said, every 30 seconds, you do your agitation. Or like I said, find an increment of numbers that fit your agitation. Maybe you could do... you know, eight every 60 seconds. But you have to learn the technique first. Film photography is strictly about technique. And technology comes second. I think today it might be the other way around with digital coming in with high technology and technique appears to be lost out there somewhere. All right, I'm about to do another agitation. And this gives you time, you can also clean your chemicals off of your funnel, which I'm about to do right now. Even though I have two funnels, you might want to get, you know, uh, three funnels. That way you have one for each bottle. Because I have a developer, a Blix, and a stabilizer. And again, the fix in this helps, as the word states, fix the image. And that's where the dye comes in. The bleach rinses off the silver and re the film into going into an unexposed condition. And then the fix kicks in and it will remove all of the silver halides. And from there, it will bring out the dyes and leave the dyes there. Also, the fix or fixer makes the film weak enough so that water can wash the chemicals away. I'm down to one minute. At 50 seconds, I will be doing my agitation again. Make sure you enjoy film photography, have fun with it. Photography is not that old, 190 years old. It's a great medium. It's not an art directly. Art is a subcategory. So when you hear people say, photography is art, you should question them. Because every photograph is not art. Nor does every photographer has to be an artist. There's other ways to enjoy photography. I'm down to my last agitation. Plus art has become a brand word, so. Now you get ready to pull your Blix back in. You want to get it, like I said, at least have it open. Be very slow when you do this. Pour it right inside of there. It's a very strong smell, but it goes with the life of a film photographer. OK. 
Okay. Now, let me get to this timer. Y'all can look at that nice chemical collection of chemicals called the Blix. I'm about to get my rinse started, which they said for three minutes, and I'm about to start it right now. This is to rinse all the chemicals off. Some people will let this run until the three minutes are, are up. Other people will rinse it out. This is when you can start cleaning stuff up. A little bit. Getting the chemicals out of the way that you're not going to use anymore. And um, just being able to have clear a clear office space so as you can see things. So this gives you time to think about what you need to do next. You know, pre-visualize what Ever Weston and Ansel Adams believe in. Basically in the the processing part. Their pre-visualization started before you took the photograph. But that's a whole different category. But this did fit into their understanding of pre-visualization. And basically nothing has changed with the terms that they use to develop them and process it. You can see have different stages, but the same kind of chemical approach goes towards every stage of film. You have the developer, you have the, the some say wash, bath. You have all of these things that are around 190 years old that goes all the way back to France and uh, Lisa Four, Nieps, and Louise Daguerre when they were discovering what the latent image was. But with photography is about 170 years old when you consider that Sir John Herschel is credited with the word, but that's a dispute because they said someone else, another Frenchman, no not Frenchman, a Frenchman in uh, Brazil had came up with the word, I think a painter, but John, Sir John Herschel is the first one as far as to have it written down or, or something like that. So photography is, the term is about 170 years old, the medium is about 190 years old. We start going into like the daguerreotype and things like that. But as I stated before, nothing has really changed. They've been using chemicals since 1820s. Each format requires a chemical approach. Maybe a bit different, but it's still the same thing. Roll film, which is this, is about 128 years old. So you should learn the history of photography. And I think that would be a great thing. So, I'm about to dump this out. And putting the stabilizer in. The stabilizer, what the stabilizer does, it could be at room temperature. The stabilizer basically will shield the dye in the color. It will shield the dye and color that is on the film and protect it from fading. Some people don't even take this part seriously so they won't put it on there but I'm trying to be proper and show you that you can put this into your film can. Now I'm about to start a new timer for this. Some people put it on 30 seconds. Some people use 60 seconds which would be a minute. Alright you can agitate it for the first 15 seconds. And after this, we'll be taking this film out, and we will see what's going on. I'm keeping my eye on the timer as well, so I'm sorry for not making eye contact. And get ready to pour this back in as well. Another nine seconds, then we will see what this film look like. Now you don't have to rush with this, because like I stated, is just to make sure that the color from the dyes are shielded and protected. And from there, basically the film is done. We're going to check it out in the film. I'm just going to drain it like this. And I will cut off this timer. 
and we will check out this roll of film. This is it right here. Cool. So roll of film. Thirty-six frames, as you can see, still has like a haze to it. Agatha has great film. I shoot on professional film as well. Let me tell you about professional film. Do not get professional film unless you're ready to use it, because the way that they prepare for professional film, which would be like Kodak Ektar, Fuji has a professional line as well, as well as rolling these other frames. You have to make sure that you use it, because when they release professional film. It is at its optimum performance or ready to be used in a camera. Any other place, you can't let it sit or it's going to come. I mean, any other, any other time, you, can't, you cannot let it sit or it's just going to come out a certain way. So you have to um, use it immediately. That's professional film. But this is not professional film. This is Agatha film. And it's a great film to use. Now, before I leave, I just want to let you know what I'm reading because people ask me what kind of books I am reading. I do read other books besides photography books. But since this is the topic of photography, I will keep it photography. This book right here is the Encyclopedia of Advanced Photography. came out in 1985. Um, it's a great resource book for people. This is for people that like to read. For those that just want to look at photographs, however, there are great essays in here and great introduction. This book by fellow photographer, Jamel Shabazz, which shows his work from 1980 all the way up to 2015, is titled Pieces of a Man. Jamel has a great eye. He gave this book to me personally. We had a great conversation about photography. He has a terrific approach, very humane lens. He was doing this way before Humans of, Photograph Humans of New York, and his work speaks for itself. He has a great legacy. and. He has exhibition going on at the Studio Museum between, I mean, 125 between Adam Clayton and Lennox. You can catch the 203 train to get there. A great exhibition. It's called Across from 125, I believe. But check it out. It's until the end of August. And um, his work, like I said, it's, it shows so much of, of us as humans. And, He's a very, very intelligent photographer. Again, Jamal Shabazz's book, Pieces of a Man. Thank you for taking the time out with me to process film. Maybe next time I will show you E6 or perhaps medium format film or black and white. Enjoy photography.